We're getting valuable Navy SEAL <laughs> slash toddler lessons at our household this morning about not letting people get under your skin. Not letting people know what gets under your skin. Not letting people know what gets under your skin. I think that's probably good for a two-year-old and also good for the rest of us. <laughs> we need a reminder. Good morning, guys. Let's go outside. Daddy's home, so he's got the kids. Now we get some peace and quiet. Oh, we have a lot of big stories to get to today. In fact, I'm going to focus on two, although this morning I was woken up uh, by my four-year-old. I'll spare you the details as to why, but it reminded me. I thought, you know, maybe the priority really needs to stay with the family today. So just one story flagging for you quickly out of New York State. Uh, Rockland County, New York has the largest measles outbreak since measles was eradicated in 2000 in the United States. More than 150 cases since October. It's a very specific community, an Orthodox Jewish community, community a majority of that, not, not everybody's Orthodox, um, but that's uh, the majority. There's a lot of international travel, and so they can't get a handle on this outbreak. It's continuing to see new cases. So the county executive put forward an, an emergency declaration that he says is the first of its kind in the nation. And I do have a question about enforcement, but here's what he says. If your child or anyone under the age of 18 hasn't been vaccinated, they're not allowed to go out in public places. So again, I don't know how they're gonna check it, but if you do, you're facing a fine um, because they just can't figure out how to stop the spread right now. So that was sort of interesting. And it, again, it's continuing there in Rockland County, New York. So we have our audience of deer again, which I, I appreciate having an audience, not, you know, of the two-legged and four-legged <laughs> variety. So let's talk about two big stories. One that has a huge impact potentially on your life and the future of your children. And another story that is gaining national and international news that probably doesn't impact your life directly, but says something about one of America's largest cities. So let's start with a story that no one's really talking about, just so that we can be different. Um, today, apparently, there's a big meeting between the top general in America, the top military official, and the big boss of Google. And here's the reason why. The top general, uh, joint, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dunford, has been accusing Google in recent weeks of aiding the Chinese military through developing technology in China that will then give them the upper hand over America. What kind of technology is he talking about? He's really focused on artificial intelligence or what an original developer of artificial intelligence called thinking machines. This is technology that is supposed to mimic the way that humans work, but there's all sorts of obviously concerns with that. I'm sure some of you are thinking about your favorite sci-fi movie, but a couple years ago, really over the last year or so, the Department of Defense has been really pushing forward to the artificial uh, intelligence technology, trying to figure out ways to apply that to our military and actually to provide some national security. There was a project called Project Maven where they were working with Google to develop a way to read video images to be able to target individuals, people of interest, and target them through drones. Google employees did not like this. They did not think that Google should be used as a weapon of war, and the pressure within the company caused Google to separate from the Department of Defense. Now Google has a research institute in China. When you work in China, you know that there are, according to General Dunford, representatives of the Chinese government within those companies and a direct line to the Chinese military. He thinks this is bad business. And just hold that in your, thought, your, your mind in a second, because I want to bring in a story from Monday. Monday, we were talking about Afghanistan, the longest war in American history. We're facing an enemy that's very strong when it comes to Islamic terrorism, whether it's the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, or ISIS. Regardless of how strong that enemy is, and I'm saying this not as a form of, of disrespect, I want to just add some context, that particular enemy oftentimes is operating in areas with no electricity and no technology. China is not. China has all of those things. And so if we're facing such challenges with, with that particular enemy, which is terrorism, imagine the challenges we could face versus China with the sort of advancements that they have in technology. This is why this story really matters. So apparently today, the Google top executive is going to meet with Dunford. They're going to talk about this. Let's see what happens. I could use some artificial intelligence in the morning, <laughs> cleaning my house. I mean, there might be great ways to use artificial intelligence, but not necessarily um, 
we don't necessarily want our enemies to have the, the hand up on that for us. So just a brief look at that. Second story that could potentially not impact your life, but everyone's talking about, and that's the Jesse Smollett case in Chicago. What happened yesterday all of a sudden? We know that there were 16 felony charges against Jesse Smollett, and suddenly they were all dropped. I wish I had some facts to tell you about why they were all dropped, but we have no facts. We don't even know why the prosecutor really made that decision, other than the prosecutor saying, well, after careful review and community service, we decided to drop all these charges. But there's a couple things that were done that are, I want to say red flags, but definitely reason to have questions over this. They didn't just drop the charges. They expunged his record completely and then sealed the case so no one will ever be able to see the police work. In addition to that, when you expunge your, your record, there's not even any sort of a record of an allegation. And so why did they do this? And why did they do this and the superintendent of police and the mayor not know about it? I mean, these are some really big questions. <laughs> Again, we don't have the facts as to why. We just have the latest in the case. And my colleague pointed out, I think this is really important. There's still a federal investigation into uh, a threatening letter that Jesse Smollett said was sent to him. The Chicago police say that was part of this big hoax because remember that's the allegation against Jesse Smollett that he planned this this hate crime attack as an orchestrated way to get attention. Um, the police still say that's the case. The prosecutor says it's not. And so here we are observing a very uh, unique legal legal situation in America. Here's just, you know, I was trying to focus on, well, why does this matter? You know, I, I want to only put stories in front of you that matter. And I had a hard time with this because in many ways, it's sort of a celebrity story. You have Chicago, which is one of the biggest cities in America, one of the biggest uh, challenges when it comes to violence in America, and not being able to really get a handle on the violence in certain communities. And, you know, you had this case that had national attention because of one actor who was alleging these crimes against him. And, and people, and the way the journalists were telling the story, were trying to say, well, this represents America overall. And so I was starting to think about that, you know, about well, what does this story really represent to us? And I think one of the w ways to think about it is maybe we're getting some real insight into what happens in the city of Chicago and the Justice Department there um, that could be negatively affecting the city. So because it's one of the biggest cities in America, I think it's worth just flagging it for you. Also, just a straight, you know, this is just like a strange storyline, but it's there. The top prosecutor recused herself from this case because a former assistant for the Obama family, former, uh, also it sounds like employee of the Obamas, uh, asked her essentially to get the FBI involved, was in communication with her about the case, saying that she represented the Smollett family. So it's sort of like this strange dynamic and the prosecutor who recused herself now has said very little about this decision to drop the charges, which is why there are those accusing the, uh, the prosecutor of, of politicizing this particular legal case. That's my son um, using an ax, a toy ax against the glass inside our living room. So um, I don't know if he just doesn't like the story or maybe... <laughs> He's just giving me some feedback. Anyways, those are things I think you should check out uh, today on our site. We also have, I mean, we have a lot of different great stories. And also a Medal of Honor ceremony at the White House today that we'll be covering a little bit later on for you as well. So have a great Wednesday, guys. Uh, check out those stories. If you have any questions for us, please let us know. And here comes my son. Come on. Come on. With an axe and a spear because it's before eight o'clock in the morning and what else, maybe we should all do that. Wouldn't that feel good to just walk out the door <laughs> with those, those weapons and no pants because that's what he, <laughs> he is. <laughs> very cute. All right guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you later.